Okay, so the other day we just introduced the uh, Lady Civita operator, which is the uh, permutation operator over here that we have defined right over here. So it's when i j and k are equal, it's equal to one, and then and it goes clockwise, equal to one. If it goes counterclockwise, i j k or k j i or j i k will be equal to minus one. And when it doesn't follow any of this combination, they will be equal to zero. Okay, so we're gonna do some examples today. All right, so let's do some examples. So using the permutation symbol, the cross product of unit vectors is written as what? So for example, the idea I'm trying to write is e to the i cross e to the j. So this will become what? This will become epsilon of i j k. Right, down. All right. And now, which are the indexes over here common? Are e and j. So this will be. of E i cross i j. And now this is the complicated part if you want, but if you have the circle, with i j k, Okay, it's not polynegative, but if you have I, you have this, and you also have this. Okay, all right. So this will be equal to what? This will be equal to epsilon of I, J, K. And then I cross J, if you do the cross product, you get a third vector, which is perpendicular to the other two, no? So if we use a Cartesian coordinate, this, this would just be equal to E of K. All right? Okay, so this is for the unit vector. So now let's do the product of two vectors. So let's say this one. Now let's say we do U cross V. All right, so this will be equal to what? Uh, if you look at it, it would be equal, if we expand this, a vector has magnitude and direction, yeah? Cross Vj Ij, okay? But using the permutation symbol, this will be equal to epsilon i j you always have two common and then you need a third index about what you can do the summation or not you have this of the two magnitudes u i v j and now again here you're gonna have e i cross e j that's why i did this one before which should be equal to what to e k no okay so this will just give you this is equal to epsilon i j k U i v j e of k. You see that the only difference is that here because it's unit vector, this is one, no? Yeah, but basically it's the same thing, all right?
All right, so now we're going to look at something else, which is the, I mean, something else, always the same thing, but we're going to look at the triple, what, something that is called the triple scalar product. Okay, and to tell the truth, I think the name can be confusing because really, I think they call it scalar here because at the end the result is a scalar, okay? But really, I mean, I mentioned at the end, this is just how you do the volume, let's say, of a cube, okay? So let's see, this would be equal, so the equation we're gonna be looking at is u dot v cross w, or this would be the same thing as u cross v dot w. So here I'm gonna add something that is important because that's always in textbook. Here, every time you have some type of operation in algebra, you like to have parentheses to know about which operation you need to do first, no? Here, they never, I mean, they rarely put parentheses because the first operation you need to do is always the one of the cross product and then you apply the dot product. If you think about it, it makes sense. When you do the dot product, what do you do? A vector dot a vector, no? Okay, so you first need to find the result of the cross product that would be a vector to dot it with this one. And same thing over here, okay? So I'm just gonna write down that over here. So parenthesis, are not being added or are omitted, so are not being added because the expressions only have meaning if the cross product is evaluated first. All right, so let's do an example of this. All right, so let's look at the expression u dot v cross w. Johnny, that you will do it this is equivalent to what? If you use a matrix method, it would be U1, U2, U3, V1, V2, V3, W1, W2, W3. We'll do the example now or later. Let's do it now, okay? I don't have it on the notes, but let's do it, okay? This should be equal to what if we do this cross product? What would be the first one? First one we'll be talking about U1, no? What would be U1? U1 would be equal to V2, W3. It would be V2, W3 minus V3, W2. Maybe we did it last time. Did we do that last time already? I don't know. So then the second one would be minus, I don't know if we did it last time. Last time would be minus, and this time would be what? V1, W3, minus V3, W1, 
U2 plus V1 W2 minus V2 W1 U3. Okay? So now let's say or in initial notation okay would be just trying to find if i did it somewhere else no okay. all right when well, initial notation will have u let me go in blue will be u dot v cross w would be equal to what so again we do each one of the vectors so then we know it's a vector so you should have magnitude times direction no but you need vectors and this should be dot of v j e j cross w k e of k okay so we know that we first need to do these operations we have u sub i e sub i and this one would be equal to what epsilon q of what we need to be careful because we need to use j and k no we have epsilon let's say of j k and we need another one let's say q but we don't use i j k no the ones on the outside so be careful with that you need to use new indexes no a new one over here and here you will have now so it would be vj the magnitude as before wk and now you need to do this dot the product of this the cross product of these two which is ij cross ik slowly i'm going to start eliminating this term over here okay i will do it at once this should be equal to what if it is a Cartesian coordinate, this should be equal to E of Q, no? Yes? This is like if your system was J, K, Q, no? Same as before. All right. So this is going to give us now. Okay, let's just rewrite the same equation before we do the next step. U sub I. E sub i of epsilon j k q v j w k e of q. All right. So let me just rewrite it a little bit differently. Again, I'm doing this in a lot of detail, but as you get used to it, you can do it a bit faster. With the U sub i epsilon j k q v j w k and now what you need to dot is what is the e sub i dot e sub k maybe i forgot to put this one here no All right, so now, what is this term equal to? This term, if you remember, is equal to the delta Kronecker, delta IQ. That is equal to zero if I different than Q. So really this only has meaning if, let's say I equal to Q or Q equal to I, no? Yeah? So this will mean what? So, we put it here, so for I equal Q, or Q equal I, I equal Q, okay, or Q equal I, what are you gonna have? You're gonna have that this is equal to epsilon, I'm not gonna do the change of index yet, okay, J, K, Q, I'm going to do a middle step, u sub i 
V sub J WQ. All right, so this would be equal to what? Um, so maybe this step is from when you go to this line will be epsilon. Let's do JKI. Q of I, VJ, WK. All right, you can change the order. This, what is this stuff equation here? I mean, this is called, I'm just trying to write it in a simpler form. I, J, K. So I can rewrite this as what? Epsilon, I, I start with I now. I can move to J, I can move to K. It's the same thing, no? Yeah? Epsilon J K I is equal to the Epsilon I J K. All right. So I think now is that I have the proper order that the indexes would be U sub I, V sub J, W K. So it will be U dot V cross W. All So again, it, I don't have it on this note, but we can do it. All right. Let's see if we can get the same thing as at the top. Uh, but let me do something. Basically, now if we change the, the, the indexes, we should get the same thing as these three expressions, no? All right, that's the only thing I'm gonna try to show, so. So let's do that. All right, so let's see now we can find out that this is actually equal to this, no? All right, so let's do the, uh, let's try to expand the uh, Lady Civita or the permutation operator. Let's see what is that one equal to. Okay, so what are the options we have for the operator? So let's say here we have uh, so permutations. For epsilon i, j, k. So let's say we have here i, here we have j, and the third line will be k. So let's see what are the options that we have. Uh, one, two, three. Two, three, one. Three, one, two, no? Otherwise the one would be zero. Or the other one would be If we do reverse, I can do one. If we go backwards, it will be one, three, two. So one, three, two, two, one, three, and three, two, one. Okay, and remember that we follow the rule over here of I, J, K equal to one if positive. So here the only thing I'm looking is to know if it's positive or negative. So one, two, three would be positive. Two, three, one would be positive. This one would be positive. I put the three cases of positive and it will be the three cases of negative value. Okay.
All right, so let's see what is our equation before. So we have the equation u dot v cross v equal to epsilon i j k u sub i p of j w of k. All right, so this can be a little bit tedious. I don't know if it will be useful or not, but okay. So let's say we have here the, all the different combinations. So let's say we have epsilon, one, two, three. This will give you what? Epsilon, one, two, three. This will be equal to basically one, no? But what would you have? You have U1, V2, W3. Okay? Plus epsilon two three one. What would that be? Uh, U two V two W one V three. All right. Plus. Epsilon three one two U three V one W two plus Epsilon so three one two one three two yeah one three two U one V three W two I did one, two, three, two, three, one. Three, one, two, one, three, two. I got the line, two, one, three. I'm just following the order here. Two, one, three, U2, V1, W3. And the last one will be plus epsilon, three, two, one. U3, V2, W1. All right, so we know this one will be equal to one. Two, three, one will be equal to one. Three, one, two equal to one. One, three, two equal to minus one. Minus one. Minus one, okay? So at least we know what we need to get. So let's say which one have U1, in common. So we'll, let's look at the first term and the fourth term, okay? So this will give us what? This will give us that we have U1, let's see, and this will be factor of V2, W3, minus V3, W2. That hopefully is the same thing that we had before, and it is, no? Yeah? Okay, so basically it's the same thing, but with the indexes. Now, if we do the same thing for U2, but probably it's gonna be a plus here, and the sign will be reversed, but it will be easier for us. U2, we take into consideration, so let's say the second term, that would be V3, W1, and minus V1, W3. This is probably the reverse than the other one, no? And you see that it is because we have the minus sign. And finally, we can do here the plus U3. So U3 will be equal to V1, W2, minus V2, W1. Okay, so basically we have shown that really is exactly the same thing. All right? When you start moving those indexes around.
Okay, so we have a bunch of different ones. All right, so. Uh, Page 20. Geometrical interpretation of triple scalar product. Okay, so the interpretation is the one I mentioned before is really what is used in order to find volumes. Okay, let's say this is for the matter. So let's say this is U. If we do the example V and W. Okay, so what was the equation we had? U dot V cross W was equal to U cross V oops, dot W. This is your V, okay? The second one. <clears throat> so basically, what is the way that you have to calculate the volume of this? You can either do length times height and you multiply by the depth, no? Or you can do height times width and you multiply by, I mean, height times width and you multiply by the depth, correct? Which would be each one of these two combinations. Okay, so the real interpretation of the triple scalar, scalar product is basically to calculate the volume, okay, in scalar coordinates. So let just say that. So if the vectors u, v, and w form a right handed. system, the triple scalar product represents the volume of a parallelogram. Okay. So now we're going to move to another one. We did the triple scalar products. So now we can do the, let's see, did I use blue or black for that one? Black, so let's use the same type of notation. It would be triple cross product. Okay, so let's first do a matrix form. Let's say in, so what we're gonna do is, let's see, U cross V cross W. And this time, it matters which one you're gonna do first. 
okay? But if we do this one, so in matrix form, what are we gonna have? We're gonna have that U cross V cross W will be equal to what? So the first vector remains as a vector. And now this one, we need to do the cross product. So it will be cross of what? The unit vector I, J, K, or E1, E2, E3 of what? We have here V1, V2, uh, sorry, V, yeah, V1, V2, V3. And then will be W1, W2, W3. And now we need to do the cross product of this one. Yeah? So what are you gonna have? Now you're gonna have I, J, K of what? First you're gonna have U1, U2, U3. But now you need to be careful because this one will be the i. The i will be v2 w3 minus v3 w2. Okay, so it will be give you v2 w3 minus v3 w2. The second, the second one, be careful, will be what? Uh, yeah, so let's do this one will be first then. So let's start by this one first v3. W1 minus V1 W3 and the last one will be V1 W2 minus V2 W1. I mean, so now maybe you can start seeing the advantage of using the index annotation, no? If you had to show this all the time, it would take pages and pages, no? And now, if we do this one here, now we need to do this one. So the result of the triple cross, triple cross product will be a vector. The final product of the triple scalar product was a scalar, no? The volume, okay? So now if we do this one, What do we get? We're gonna get that U cross V cross W will be equal to what? So it will be a vector of U1, uh, no, will be, so the first component for, will be U2 times this term minus U3 times this term, no? So it will be, Let's see, we take a lot of space. Yeah, so, so we'd be U2 of V1, W2 minus V2, W1, minus U3 of V3, then this term over here, V3, W1 minus V1, W3. Okay, the second one, we need to reverse the sign. So it will be, I start by this one, U3 of V2, W3 minus V3, W2 minus U1 of V1, W2 minus V2, W1. And at the end, the last one will be U1 times this one minus this one, this one, okay? So U1, V3, W1 minus V1, W3 minus U2, 
of V2 W3 minus V3 W2. Okay, now obviously we're gonna see how it would look like with the initial notation. Or in initial notation, what are you gonna have? U cross V cross W. So we do exactly the same thing. Each one is a vector that has magnitude and direction. So U sub I, E sub I, cross of V sub J, E sub J, cross W sub K, E sub K. All right? So, you first need to do the one in parentheses. Okay, so you have U sub I, E sub I, and now what do we need to do here? We need to add a new index, no? Because it's J, K plus another one. So it would be cross, now I'm gonna use the same color, I'm not gonna change colors. J, let's say J, K, L, so this will be equal to what? A, J, uh, sorry, V, J, WK, and I'm not gonna do it, but now what it should be, it should be EJ cross EK, that should give EL, yeah? Okay. All right, so now, now we need to do this one. We did this one here, this cross product. Now we need to do this one over here. Okay, so over here, remember that all these operations, you don't do them on the magnitude, you do them on the vectors, no? Or the direction. So here we did it on J and K. We ended up with L. Now this operation, we need to do it between I and L, okay? So this will mean what? That this, this one will give now, let's say, the different color will give you an epsilon of I, L, and we need to define a new letter, no? For this product, so let's say I, L, M, okay? And then we can put the other one by the side would be epsilon J, K, L, and then you have U sub I, you can put the magnitude, U sub I, VJ, WK. And then what would be I cross, I mean, maybe this one, let me do it here, might be too much to put at the same time. The cross product of these two should give you what? E of M, okay? So at the end, what we're gonna have is that the triple cross product is equal to epsilon I L M J K L. Oops. would be equal to epsilon. Yeah, let's change on the next line, I, L, M, epsilon, J, K, L, U sub I, V sub J, W, K, of E sub M. This is correct, but if you want, because then it would be easier to put the same indexes at the same location. So it would be equal to epsilon, M, I, L, no, is the same thing. J, K, L, U sub I, this is a U, 
V sub J, W K, E of M. Okay. So basically, I mean, the most important thing of this initial notation is if you read like very advanced textbooks or very advanced uh, papers, instead of giving you all these equations in the form of matrices, okay, which can take pages and pages, no? They give you the tensor notation. Okay, so for example, like I mentioned before, if you have an isotropic material, you're only gonna have one direction, but you have an orthotropic, it will go to, I mean, you're isotropic, you might have three, no? Okay. Orthotropic, you might have nine or 16. And then if you go to the full, I think it's about 64. So you don't want a matrix of 64 by 64. You can just put the equation at this form and it will make sense, okay? All right. That's the main reason of, of learning this. Okay, so let's do a couple of very simple cases about these products. And we'll stop probably over here. So, all right, so let's first look at the first one. Uh, let's start by a very, sim very simple one. Moment. of a force. So the funny thing is that something simple becomes complicated with initial notation, no? But like for example, you know that M is equal, let's say, the arm cross the force, okay? So in initial notation, this will be equal to what? R sub I, E sub I, cross F sub J, E of J, or this should be equivalent to what? Epsilon I, J, K of E, I, oops, yeah, yeah, of R, I, sorry, R, I, F, J, E of K. Okay, I know, somebody gives you this, you know it's the moment, but if somebody get right to this equation, pretty hard to recognize that is the moment equation, no? Okay. Another case that one is more related to kinematics will be the angular velocity Where is the angular velocity? Angular velocity is equal to omega cross R, okay, for rotational motion. So this will give you what? Omega sub I, E sub I, cross R sub J, I mean E sub J, will give you epsilon I, J, K of omega sub I, R sub J, E of K. All right, and maybe that would be the last one we do. Then one that is more complicated would be the normal actuation. Which is what? Is omega cross omega cross r. So basically you see that the normal actuation is really the triple cross product, okay? So we could just write down at the end the equation or we can just rederive it very quick, all right? So let's do it a bit fast, is that okay? So this will give you what? This is a vector, so omega sub i, e sub i, cross omega sub j, e sub j, cross R of K, E of K, okay? So we're gonna do first the cross product within parentheses. So this will give you omega sub I, E sub I, 
cross, let's say, epsilon of what? You need to do J, K, and a new index. So let's say J, K, and the new index would be L. All right? W, J, R sub K, and this will be E of L. All right? Now we need to do this cross product around I and L. Okay, so we have epsilon I, L, M, epsilon J, K, L. I mean, it's exactly the same thing that we just did. And then we're going to have omega sub I, omega sub J. R sub K, and here we're going to have E of M, the new index. Okay. All right, so let's see. So this will be the This is a giant expression. So for two dimensional problems, it is known that the triple cross product, I mean, you can do it if you want with the matrices, ends up being equal to minus omega squared times the vector r. Yeah, you might remember or not remember that, okay? But that's what it is. So if we want to, so this expression here is already in three dimensions, okay? So we want to reduce this one from two dimensions. What can we do? So we can say taking J or I equal J or J equal I, it doesn't matter. What are you going to have? of that omega cross omega cross r so let me write this i l m j k L W I W J R sub K Yeah, okay. So what would happen here? So this two over here will become omega sub I omega sub I Okay, so this becomes the square, then this will be the R, no? Okay, and this will be our vector R sub K. All right, so here this is a difficult part here to understand, okay, maybe to see is that M I L, what was the order? It was I L M, did we change the order here of the subindexes? So this one, we did not change on this one. So this is one, I mean, I have here on the notes, but here on the notes, I have that this one should be equal to, this one equal to negative one. So let's see, uh, where's that one coming from then? Huh, hold on one second. Okay, so let's see here about the negative sign. Basically say that this one goes on the opposite order, okay? But let's try to make this a little bit more clear. J equal to uh, I, so we have epsilon I, K, L, and this one would be epsilon I, L, M. So here you see goes I, okay, so I can write this one as I, L, M. 
So we can keep this one I L M and then this one we can write L I K. Okay. And basically what I need to pay attention here is not that direct, it's not that obvious, but is that the auto rotation here for the indexes L I and L and L and I is uh, opposite. Okay, so the signs will be opposite for each one of the terms. All right. So then this will be equal to what? Negative one times one will be equal to negative. You will be omega sub i, omega sub i. We end up being omega square if you want omega i square no and then would be the vector so we're trying to prove is this okay and this would be the vector r of k e of m okay but let's just leave it on the this form you see that this is equal omega square times r all right Okay, and we're going to stop over here because we don't have time to do the next section, which would be the same thing in order to try to find the determinant of a matrix. So we do that on Thursday.